face when I think about how overused the word or concept is, is I hear this comparison to companies that are quote unquote open in this new world. And yet what they're fundamentally doing is taking some technology as an example, source code somewhere, and throwing it over a wall. But that's not open to me. I don't think that helps anybody in a new marketplace, in a new world. I don't think it helps advance us into a golden era. That's transparency. Yeah, yeah, here's a look at some code and some things we're doing. That is not true openness. What open means in this day and age is about letting people in, letting other companies in to influence direction, aligning in new ways, changing business practices in that way, implementing completely new IPR schemes, intellectual property schemes and approaches, and being comfortable with it. What open means is, as an example, giving up on control points and as a business, getting very comfortable with competing on your merits. Those things all add up. Those are the attributes of openness. Have you created a dialogue? Are you listening? Did you do something about it? Are you aligning in new ways with different businesses and different individuals? Is there some equality between small companies and large companies, or individuals and large companies of scale? some equality in the level of influence and contribution they can make to what you're doing? If no, then again, I think you have to question whether or not you've truly done something open in terms of a, a platform opportunity or otherwise. Now, you, you know, you heard a little bit about my background a few minutes ago. Um, you know, I'll add to it, there's a, there's a company that uh, I worked with years and years ago that was uh, at one point called the Valley's oldest startup. It was B. I don't know if anybody's familiar with B or BOS here in the audience. Certainly see some people old enough and wise enough in the industry to have, uh, to have been there and done that a little bit. But one of the things, you know, about B before we were in our assets were acquired by Palm and before I went on to, to Symbol, and, uh, and to Nokia, I spent two and a half years at Nokia. Before all of that, we were experimenting with open models and open concepts. And in some ways, because the business was not a real success, we failed miserably. But it's interesting, there's a, a group of individuals, a good core of 10 or 15 individuals who were part of that company. When you, when you ask us, okay, what was that like to go back eight to 10 years ago and be a part of that type of business where some great technology was created and so forth. And one of the things you would hear in terms of how we interacted with developers, how we interacted with potential licensees, how we interacted with press and analysts and other companies that we aligned with, you would hear, we, we didn't really ever view it that we were working at a company. We actually didn't have concepts like operational efficiency. We had some scooters in the hallway. We had some people who were really messy and you could tell because their cubes were overflowing. We had a tremendous level of chaos. But what we did have, again, if you ask these 10 to 15 core individuals, we had a movement on our hands. We had a collection of companies and individuals who were extremely passionate about what we were doing, whether or not they received a paycheck or not. In fact, most of these same individuals, when you, when you speak to them, can't remember how much they made on B or lost, for that matter. I was in the lost category, but just can't remember. And we gained a tremendous amount of experience. And each of those individuals today, it's interesting, you can find them in many places in the mobile industry. As the industry has gone to realize this opportunity of these converged markets, you can find them in places everywhere, leveraging that experience, getting out there and talking about what's truly open and having that type of conversation. And if you take the perspective of a developer for a second, I mean a large ISV, independent software vendor, you take the perspective of an independent 
uh, a scripter who just has too much time on their hands, um, and look at what opportunities do they have to come into what we're doing and help create great consumer experiences. If you, if you look at and speak to those developers, one of the things you learn is that no matter how much in the last couple of years we have embraced open, we're still suffocating them. They have little or no real chance to get to market and get a sustainable return on their work or to simply get some fulfillment and satisfaction out of some innovation or some app they've created or some service they provide. It's the equivalent of taking this long journey where you see a monolith sitting way out there on some foreign planet. You, you gear up, you invent some technology so that you can even breathe. You invent a spaceship so you can get out to that planet in a timely basis and you get there and you get off and suddenly you, you step in front of the monolith and you see the, the, the sign. Checked out back in five minutes. When you speak to some of these developers, very innovative things they've created, they'll tell you stories about how, in some cases, I, I spoke to a guy in Bangalore, India, who actually had to, he had a two-man shop, created a great search application and tool for distributed search, knew he was going to go right up against the, the other search companies, either OEMs creating local search and distributed search routines, or the Googles of the world coming in with the internet search apps and capabilities on, on mobile products, and he was fine with that. He did, he had, he had a couple of really innovative things he was doing with his, with his search app. He was really excited about it. These guys were apparently really proficient coders. Great distributed application search tool. One of the things he encountered was that he actually had to hire an attorney and spend four to six months in negotiations on IPR, license policies, and other things alone with multiple parties. And by the time I met him, he said to me, he says, I, I don't even, you know, I've got to go for a Series C round now and get some more money. I can't get through this. My, can you help? There is, my, my app is never going to see the light of day across all these products. Never going to see it. That story you hear time and time again if you listen. And if we had a chance of realizing the benefits of a golden era and truly enriching people's lives who use these products and services, we have to get rid of those barriers tomorrow. Another point I'll touch on 